So the other day we talked about, at least on uh, on the Kyle Kalinske show, we talked about Trump in the courtroom for the E. Jean Carroll defamation trial. Now, he was already found guilty about, not guilty, that's not the right term, because it's a civil case, not a criminal case. He was found liable already. And so the question is, how much money is he going to have to pay? So what Trump decided to do is the Alex Jones move, and he decided to go to this procedure, which, by the way, he doesn't have to go to. He's, he's making a point of going to this. That's going to come up as relevant in just a little bit. So the other day when we talked about it, uh, I was going through the jury process. It was really interesting because they were trying to get people on the jury who are like total blank slates. They, they didn't want people who are really politically active. They didn't want people who were really pro-Trump or anti-Trump or have really strong positions on the Me Too movement or part of any extreme right-wing group or extreme left-wing group. They wanted people who are basically like living under a rock to be in this jury, which I found interesting. It is actually something that I agree with in terms of trying to, to get justice here. So the other day, Trump was sitting there and according to reports from the courtroom, he was very uh, visibly pissed off. He was like shaking his head a lot and like harumphing and making all sorts of like, you know, gestures. Didn't really say much, but making gestures to show his disapproval at the court. It was very, he was very ticked off. Well now, apparently the day after, this is still going on and we get more news and it heated up even more in the courtroom today. So the judge is a guy by the name of Judge Kaplan and um, he's overseeing all this. And there were times where, when E. Jean Carroll was on the stand that Trump start, started muttering under his breath, con job and witch hunt <laughs> at another time. And so this, it looks like Judge Kaplan at some point hit his breaking point with the antics, no pun intended, saying breaking point. <laughs> um, and he basically called Trump out on the spot and said, look, you have a right to be here, but I could revoke that right if you're not listening to the court, if you're not abiding by the rules within this court. And then he said to him, and I bet you would love me to kick you out of this courtroom, wouldn't you? Because you'd love the show of it. You'd love the spectacle of it. You'd love to like use that to play the victim. He didn't say this part, but this is what I'm implying That's from implied. it. Mm -hmm. And Trump was basically like, yeah. He threw his hands up and said, yeah, I would like that. I would like that. Damn. And so um, he didn't actually throw him out. And my understanding is not much was said after that. You did have E. Jean Carroll get cross-examined by Alina Haba, who's Trump's lawyer. But then after the fact, um, Trump was outside of the courtroom. And this is what he's been doing whenever he goes to these things. He yeah. makes a political show of it after the fact. Yeah. And so he went out there and started giving his basically his stump speech and saying like, actually, you know what? I'm the victim. They're not the victim. I'm the victim. And uh, saying that I should be the one who's getting paid damages. And this, dr this judge, very bad guy, Trump hating guy, not a good guy. And he was complaining that the judge wouldn't allow him to, like, I don't know, take a day for his uh, his mother-in-law's funeral. But Trump wasn't even, Trump was doing, like, rallies the same day that he was saying, I need to be off for my mother-in-law's funeral. So it did heat up in the courtroom, man, for the judge to say to him, like, I'll kick your ass out, number one. Number two, I bet you want me to kick your ass out. And Trump basically was like, yeah. I mean, that really kind of gives the game away, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I mean, this is basically his strategy with regard to all these cases. I mean, this is civil, so this is just about money, just about money. It's not about his uh, freedom. It's not going to end with Trump in prison. Um, but his strategy for all of this is, number one, drag things down. Number two, like, make it a show and try to turn it effectively from a liability, his legal jeopardy from a liability to some sort of an asset, which in the Republican primary context has really worked for him. You know, the fact that he's been under siege from the, the liberals and the deep state or out to get him, et cetera, et cetera. That has been a tremendous asset for him um, that he has used to great effect within the Republican primary context. I don't think it's the smartest strategy for a general election because right now, people have kind of forgotten like what it was like when Trump was president and how much chaos he brings and how like just obnoxious and insufferable that he is. And so the more manifest like manifestations of just how chaotic and terrible he is as a person, it's probably not great for him with like a normie audience that he needs to stay in his corner for a general election. I also found it interesting that he was apparently trying to charm the jury a little bit. Yeah. He was like smiling at them and like, you know, making head gestures to them and whatnot. It's very, it's very Trumpian, it's as very is Trumpian. the let's make this 
a political show after the fact because I think that's an admission. I don't really think I can win or do well when I'm in the courtroom. Yeah. Not just in this case, but also in the New York fraud trial and also in, I think, the 91 criminal charges that are coming up with the classified documents and the yeah. election subversion and all that stuff. I think he knows he's in trouble in there. So his best move is to like, take your lumps when you're in the courtroom, but then when you're outside of it, immediately make it a political thing. Yeah. Right? And like you said, that will play well and has played tremendously well in the primary, but come the general election, I think it's a whole nother beast. Yeah. Because that's, you know, that's it's not like Biden's doing well in the general election. His numbers are horrible also for different reasons, but I don't think that this sort of like, look at me, giant show plays for a ge general election audience. I agree. And we, I mean... I don't know what to think of what's going to happen in the general election. I really go back and forth, but um, we did just have another special election in Florida and it's basically like a swing district. Biden won it by five, but DeSantis had won it by 12 and um, Democrats won it. And that was in spite of the fact that actually Democratic turnout was kind of low, but yet enough independents cross over to still win this special election. That's been the story of all the post midterm right. special elections. So I look at that and I'm like, okay, well there's some kind of dynamic playing out that's not being captured at the surface. And then you see in the same at the same time a poll come out of Georgia that has Trump up by eight points. Yeah. So who the hell knows, but yeah. it is my personal opinion that the more Trump reminds everyone of exactly who he is, the less of a chance he stands to actually win in the fall. And uh, hope, anyway. pre prepare yourself for the fact that we're gonna, as long as he keeps going to either the civil trials or the, uh, the criminal ones, they still have to be the criminal ones, but yeah, um, I expect these fireworks with the judges. Oh, I expect yeah. it because he's looking for it so that he could turn around and play the victim. That's right. He want, that's exactly what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, there you have it.